Imagine studying this way, outside for the entire school year, including the bitterly cold months of winter. That is what occurs at this school for girls in Afghanistan, in poor, remote Barakshan province. Last November, we received an email from a friend in Afghanistan who volunteers at this school. The girls are freezing, she said. Their exams are coming up, and they study outside all day in thin clothes, even when there's snow on the ground. The girls are determined to pass their exams, she told us, but they need warm clothes. Touched by her plea, we sent a small sum. It was enough to outfit each girl with a winter coat, a pair of boots, warm socks, and a book. Look at their smiles. This gift was so small, less than $500, but it allowed 20 girls to pass their exams and stay in school. It demonstrates how a small act of generosity on your part can have such an outsized benefit for someone else. Preventing sex trafficking is the goal of our partner in Northern Myanmar, educational empowerment. Northern Myanmar is a region of persecuted ethnic minorities and the daughters of poor families are targets for traffickers. For years, the traffickers have lured girls into the sex trade with promises of high-paying jobs in neighboring countries. And because they lack skills for good jobs in Myanmar, the girls jump at the opportunities promised by the traffickers. Our partner, Educational Empowerment, is determined to stop this. With support from the Gender Side Awareness Project, Educational Empowerment just launched an intensive digital training program. Each girl receives three months of instruction in Microsoft Office, English, and business presentation skills. Here, a student named Fiofio Fio presents her final research project, a PowerPoint presentation delivered in English about literacy in Myanmar. Twelve students are trained each quarter, receiving certificates upon completion of the course. The Cambodian Village Fund educates girls in poor rural areas turning them into self-reliant women and the backbone of tomorrow's professional workforce. Hello, I'm Srinath. I have uh, one sister. I study in uni uh, University of Badenbong. I, I uh, subject uh, accounting. Yeah. And I study in a uh, uh, medical for nursing midwife. Uh, I would like to uh, thank for sponsor. Thank you a lot. That video taken a year ago was from our sponsored student Srenok in Cambodia. Srenok on the left is one of three young women we support through the Cambodian Village Fund. Nothing about this capable young woman suggests poverty, but she grew up in grinding poverty. During the war, Srenok's father suffered a devastating injury that left him severely disabled. Her mother supports the family, earning just $1.50 a day. While growing up, she cared for her father and thought of him as her patient. This led Srenok toward a career in nursing. When Srenok graduated from high school, she was in the top 10% of her class, but her dream of becoming a nurse seemed out of the question. Then. An unexpected check arrived from the Gender Side Awareness Project, allowing Srenok to register at the university. Elated, Srenok registered just before the deadline and started classes the very next day. Srenok wants to specialize as a midwife because, in her words, it's a life-saving activity that involves two lives, the mothers and the babies. During the past year, Srenok completed two years of study in a single year, doing a year of liberal arts and a year of nursing at the same time. At the end of that demanding year, she received her nursing cap. Intelligent and motivated, Srenok will soon use her education to improve outcomes for mothers and their babies in rural Cambodia. In Uttar Pradesh, India, we support a school called Pardada Pardati, which means great-grandfather, great-grandmother in Hindi. The school started with just 13 students, all girls, 
and now instructs 4,000 girls in multiple schools. It is the brainchild and retirement project of Sam Singh, a former executive with DuPont, who founded the school with his retirement money. Sam believes wholeheartedly in educating girls. When asked why, he'll tell you that to move a society out of poverty, you must work through the women. Change comes through the ladies, he says, especially the mother. Pardada Pardati offers free education from pre-K through high school, three meals per day, health care, safe transportation, books, uniforms, and school supplies, and it makes sure that the girls get plenty of exercise. To put their students on par with students from more privileged backgrounds, Pardada Pardati has built three STEM laboratories, a math lab, a computer lab, and a science lab. There's also an English lab to improve proficiency in English. The Gender Side Awareness Project supports the food budget. As you can imagine, feeding 4,000 girls three times a day is no small task. On the other side of the world, in Guatemala, we support three young women at a school for indigenous students. Indigenous people are the most disadvantaged and underserved group in Latin America. The school, called Miguel Angel Asturias Academy, sprang from the personal experience of founder Jorge Choholan. Jorge explains his vision in Spanish. Let me translate. When we founded the school in 1995, we had a big dream. We wanted to begin a school system throughout Guatemala that would produce critical thinking students. I faced problems of racism because of my last name and my accent. Since then, I've always thought about how it could be that other indigenous people wouldn't face the same problems. We work with basic themes each month. We have themes like gender, pollution, health, ecology, education, courtesy, human rights, racism, corruption, and discrimination. We don't want our students to think like the rest of our society thinks, that women are meant to marry, and they are not meant to study, and that men are meant to study, but only to a certain grade, and then they should go to work. Last year, we introduce you to Vanessa. She touched us with her beautiful thank you letter, explaining how she wants to be a doctor who serves the poor. Vanessa continues to pursue that goal. Last summer, she volunteered at a mobile health clinic, taking medical histories from patients who lined up for care. Vanessa and our sponsored student, Yoselin, also educated illiterate mothers about nutrition. Here is Vanessa's touching thank you letter from last year. I am very grateful to GenDap for helping me. I want to show everyone that the help I am getting this is worth it. One of my greatest dreams is to be a great doctor so I can help those who need it and do not have the means to pay for medicine. Our last education program, Invisible Children Uganda, was founded by a woman who is now a legend in northern Uganda. Her name is Jolly Andruville. Jolly was a teenager when the notorious warlord Joseph Kony and his Lord's Resistance Army ravaged the countryside. She was kidnapped and held for two years, forced to work as a child soldier by day and a sex slave by night. Luckily, Jolly managed to escape eventually returning to school for the education she had missed. The education made all the difference in her life. After graduating, she worked for several large NGOs and then founded several nonprofits herself. Jolly emphasizes girls' education because women are so vulnerable and oppressed in Uganda. To date, Jolly has educated almost 2,000 girls. In 2005, she was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. The Gender Side Awareness Project supports 20 of Jolly's students. 
but we'll just meet one. Acero. Acero is just 14 years old, but at that tender age, she approaches her studies with drive and energy. Acero writes, I want to be a doctor because I want to give advice to young girls who are still in school on how to avoid getting HIV and AIDS. I want to be a doctor because most girls get early pregnancy because they don't know how to avoid it. And if my dreams come true, I will be controlling them on how to avoid it. I want to be a doctor because people in our community suffer from diseases and there is no doctor who can give first aid. That is the woman I want to be because we are in a competitive world. Nacero, may your dream come true. We'll continue to support you. It's because of all this that we educate girls in developing countries. Education is the great fixer. It pulls a girl out of poverty. It makes her self-reliant. It delays marriage. It delays childbearing. It prevents labor trafficking. It prevents sex trafficking. And importantly for us, it helps to end gender side.